Yes, friends, so we continue to deliberate on the sexual sin of King David. The sexual sin of King David taken from Second Samuel chapter 11. So we find David walking on his, the roof of his palace. Then he saw this woman watch, washing herself. She was very beautiful. He was captivated by the woman. He decided he had to have her. He had to have sex with her. So he inquired after her, was told that it was one of his servants' wife. It didn't matter to him then. He wanted her. He was so overwhelmed by this, the beauty of this woman. He decided he had to have a piece of her. And many times that happened to us, both man and woman. So we are no different from David. Right? So we can't condemn David. We have to condemn ourselves first. But these are lessons that God recorded in, in his word. So that we may take warning. And we might see that God is not partial. Even with King David, he's not partial. And it's not for us, how God handled the situation. It's not for us to say, well, David did it, so I can do it. Because many of us couldn't stand up to what David went through as a punishment for, uh, for his behavior. So he went and took her. And then uh, he went, when the woman said and told him that she was pregnant, he decided that he, he didn't want the disgrace. So now he had to conceive a plan how to cover it up. So he sent for the woman's husband. Who was at war the woman tried to bribe him to go to with to his wife even got him drunk the man would no, not go into all of it because he was a man of integrity and thought that it was so shameful for him to go in to have sex and pleasure with his wife while his brethren were fighting so the plan wasn't working out as how david thought at all so he had to go even further into sin by contriving a plan the lowest of the law to get the man killed so that it could be cover up um it could cover up right and so he even gave the man when you read further down verse 14 and uh, and it came to pass in the morning that david wrote a letter to joab and sent it by the hand of uriah the man himself and he wrote in the letter saying set uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle and retire from him get away from him that he may be smitten and die so first it was the breaking of the of the um i think it was must have been the if we go to Exodus, how much commandments were broken here? If we go to Exodus chapter 20, we shall find that uh, the first commandment was, was broken was not uh, thou shalt not commit adultery. It was the one that says thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not uh, covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. So the first commandment that David broke here are violated was commandment number 10 thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife and then he he, he after that now he commit he he um he, he he violated commandment number seven exodus chapter 20 and verse um 14 thou shalt not commit adultery so then he he he, he committed adultery he coveted then he committed adultery then commandment number six Exodus 20 verse 13, thou shalt not kill. So he committed murder right there. And from one thing leads to another. That's how sin is. You violated one precept and then you continue to violate and violate. Save for the mercy of God, you go straight down into hell. But listen what happened. As we go on into 2 Samuel chapter 12. Um, when David was confronted by Nathan the prophet, God was all seen. He... He pronounced judgment upon this man, saying that the man should be should be killed. Um, 2 Samuel 12, verse 5. And then verse 6, he says, He shall restore the lamb fourfold, because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. Verse 7. And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thus said the Lord of God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and so forth, and so forth, and so forth. And verse 9 says, Wherefore thou hast despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight. So God said it was evil. And thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. And hast taken his wife to be thy wife. And hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now therefore, now therefore, here comes the bitter judgment. The sword shall never depart from thine house. Because thou hast despised me. And hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. God does not clear the guilty. God does not respect persons. That's the God we serve, friend. 
Thus said the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house, and I will take thy wives before in thine eyes, and give them unto thy neighbor, have mercy, and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of the son. For thou did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. When we do our evil in quiet, God says he will show it out in the open. So all those people in God's church who are committing adultery and fornication and every kind a matter of fact, many times some people when you see them pregnant, you you you, you can't believe it when you hear that they're pregnant. Because they appear so holy, they appear so righteous, they appear so innocent. But under the cover of dark, they do, they're involved in all sorts of stuff. Some people who have fallen, you could never believe it. Some preachers, some evangelists. Huh? Because they allow themselves to be seduced by the devil. They refuse to, to submit their passion to the working of the Holy Spirit to overcome their passion. They still love something so much that they won't give it up. What do you love so much that you won't give up, friend, that you're willing to exchange for your soul? No matter how much sex, no matter how much pleasure, when you come to put a dying pillow on your deathbed, these things cannot help you. You cannot turn to them for solace. So, mortify your flesh every day and lay your all on the altar of sacrifice. We know that the, 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 the sex urge is the strongest urge in man and animal. It is a test for us because we say there is power in the blood. There is power in the blood of Jesus to overcome our sexual passion, our sexual urges. We must first decide in our minds that we want to win the victory over the sexual passion and over the sexual loss. It is very important, friends. Or, no matter what else we do, no matter how we preach and so forth and so forth, we shall not make into the kingdom. Verse 13, listen to this. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also has put away thy sin, thou shalt not die. That's why God called him a man after his own heart. Because, because, when confronted about his sin, he did not try to give any excuse. He was ready to yield and to confess that he did an evil thing. Right? And But listen to this. How be it? Because be, by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme, the child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. Verse 15. And Nathan departed unto his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David, and it was very sick. You see? So, um, let's not belittle sin in any way, or let us not condone sin, or many people say, David did it, and so on, so on, so That has nothing to do with it, brethren. It's what God says, right? God says that we are not supposed to do this thing, because, um, uh, because, 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 God will not, by any way, clear the, gu the guilty. Right? So, so we see um, that God says that, um, and although, and David, it was before this thing that, Dave, that God called David a man after his own heart. So it also shows that even, even though a man may be a, a man after God, he's not perfect also. But that doesn't mean God put up with sin. Listen to ver uh, 1 Samuel chapter 13. 1 Samuel 13 and verse 14. He says, uh, let's read from verse 14. He says, And Samuel said unto Saul, Thou hast, thou hast uh, done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought him a man after his own heart, and the Lord has commanded him to be a captain over his people, and because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. You see what I mean? So David was, a, was God says, a man after his own heart, even before he became king, even before he did this wickedness. Yet he sinned. But the thing is, he was repentant. He was humble. He was humble. He confessed his sins, and therefore the Lord was able to pardon and forgive him, and to work with him. David is saved. There is no reason why you and I should remain in sin and lose out on our soul's salvation. Amen.